Picture this, an engine so powerful, it could drive a ship the size of a skyscraper. Yet it runs entirely on steam. Sounds impossible, right? Well, it's real. And today we're stepping inside the world of the biggest triple expansion steam engines ever built. These aren't just machines, they're monuments to human ambition. In an age obsessed with microchips and electric motors, it's easy to forget what raw, unfiltered mechanical power looks like. These engines were massive, their pistons taller than a person, their rhythm shaking entire ships as they crossed the ocean. Stick around, because in the next few minutes, you'll see just how gigantic they really were how they worked, and why they changed the world forever. So what exactly is a triple expansion engine, and why was it such a game changer? Think of it like squeezing every last drop of juice from an orange. Instead of using steam once and throwing it away, engineers figured out how to make it work three times in a row. Here's how it works. First, Superheated steam rushes into a high-pressure cylinder, pushing a massive piston. Once it's done there, that steam still has energy, so instead of wasting it, they send it into an even bigger intermediate-pressure cylinder for a second push. And finally, one last ride, the steam expands again in a huge low-pressure cylinder before cooling and condensing. This clever three-stage process meant ships could travel farther, faster, and burn less coal. In fact, these engines were up to twice as efficient as earlier steam engines. Sure, 15 to 20% thermal efficiency doesn't sound huge by today's standards, but at the time, it was revolutionary. Now let's talk size, and I'm not exaggerating when I say these engines were colossal. Take the Olympic-class ocean liners, ships like RMS Olympic and her tragic sister, Titanic. Their reciprocating engines weren't just large, they were towering giants of steel. Each triple expansion engine stood over 60 feet tall. That's like a six-story building inside a ship. The low-pressure cylinder alone was 12 feet across, big enough to park a car inside. And when those pistons moved, they had a 75-inch stroke. Imagine a solid piece of metal the size of a tree trunk slamming back and forth in perfect rhythm. Together, these two engines produced over 30,000 horsepower, driving the ship across the Atlantic at over 20 knots. That's raw mechanical muscle roaring day and night beneath your feet. And it wasn't just the luxury liners. During World War II, the reliable triple expansion engine powered thousands of Liberty ships, more than 2,700 built, hauling cargo across dangerous waters. These engines weren't glamorous, but they were unstoppable. But these monsters didn't just rule the oceans, they powered the land, too. Triple expansion engines were the beating hearts of industry. In massive pumping stations, they kept entire cities supplied with fresh water. In textile mills and steelworks, they drove the machines that fed growing economies. They even generated electricity for some of the very first urban power grids. Take the Crossness Pumping Station in London, an engineering cathedral from the 19th century. While its famous beam engines came just before triple expansion technology, the principle was the same. Build bigger, more efficient engines to serve a rapidly modernizing world. Later, true triple expansion powerhouses scaled up even further, driving whole factories day and night. Imagine the roar, the rhythmic pulse of pistons, steel rods as thick as tree trunks, moving in perfect unison, delivering power to millions. These engines weren't just machines. They were the industrial heartbeat of an era. But who built these giants? Who dared to think this big? The engineers of the late 19th and early 20th centuries weren't just building engines, they were redefining what was possible. Visionaries like Charles Parsons and countless unsung designers, draftsmen, and mechanics pushed steel and steam to their absolute limits. They weren't chasing records for the fun of it. They were solving real problems. 
How do you make ships cross oceans faster and cheaper? How do you power booming cities without running out of fuel? How do you automate heavy industry to meet global demand? These towering machines were their answers, born out of ambition, necessity, and raw mechanical genius. Their work laid the foundation for everything that followed. Turbines, diesel engines, even the principles behind modern power plants. Eventually, the age of these mechanical giants came to an end. Steam turbines took over, offering smoother, faster power for big ships. Diesel engines followed, running farther on less fuel and without massive boilers. By the mid-20th century, triple expansion engines were fading into history, but their legacy never disappeared. The idea of multi-stage expansion, squeezing every bit of energy from steam, lives on today in modern turbines that power electricity grids worldwide. The DNA of these engines still pulses through our technology. And if you want to see them close up, you can. Many have been beautifully preserved in museums and historic ships, silent now, but still awe-inspiring. Standing beside one, you can almost feel the deck trembling, hear the deep heartbeat of pistons in motion, and imagine what it must have been like when steam ruled the world. These machines may be silent now, but their story still roars through history. If you enjoyed stepping inside this forgotten world of steam and steel, there's plenty more to explore. Check out my next video right here and join me as we uncover more incredible engineering marvels that shaped our world.